Raheem asked you guys to look around for leaders, and Mark asked you to look around for friends and company. I want you to ask around, look around too. So look on your left, and on your right. Look at the person sitting in front of you and behind you. What do you see? A person, right? I don't want to alarm you, but <laughs> did you know that there are more bacteria than humans? You are more bacteria than humans. There are 10 times more bacteria in you than your own cells. Each of us has around 100 trillion human cells, but we also carry one quadrillion bacteria with us. This sounds scary, doesn't it? So what does bacteria remind you of? Does it remind you of bugs, germs, or illnesses? I want to do a small survey. So if you please can raise your hand when you think, if you think that bacteria in general are harmful. Anyone? Oh, just few. Well, I want to challenge this idea today. And to challenge this idea, we need to think outside the box. You see, humans are cities of bacteria. We have a symbiotic and mutualistic relationship with the bacteria living with us. And you may not exist without them because they help us digest food, absorb the essential vitamins. They help us maintain a healthy and self-sustaining human. But why can't we scale this up and use bacteria to create healthy and self-sustaining cities? Imagine a world where Imagine a world where bacteria can convert greenhouse gases back into fuel or create light sources that are environmentally friendly. We can create prosperous cities that are powered and cleaned by bacteria. And this is far easier than you think. I'm on a team of people who are working with genetically modified organisms at the University of Calgary. As a volunteer in research initiative, we use bacteria to clean our city and our province. We compete in iGEM, the international genetically engineered machines competition. And as I'm speaking right now, my teammates are actually at Stanford, speaking at the very same time to compete for spots in the finals at MIT. We're using synthetic biology to clean and power our city. So what is synthetic biology? Synthetic biology is taking an organism and engineering a novel system biology with new functions to make our lives better and easier. And these bacteria have the potential to do that. We can use genetically engineered organisms to clean the waste and convert them into energy. And as scary as using bacteria sounds, we can actually turn these bacteria into something very good, and we're actually doing that. We're using these bacteria to clean some of the biggest problems of our cities already, such as the water treatment facility. We use bacteria to degrade organic compounds into harmless molecules, but these organisms are naturally occurring, what we are working with are genetically modified bacteria through synthetic biology. And using synthetic biology, we can actually allow these microorganisms to do things they can't do before. And so these are the small solutions. I want you to talk about the three big problems we face, and three big problems that we leave after millions or billions of years of humanity. And number one is nuclear waste. They can outlast us for billions of years. And number two is fossil. Not our fossil, but the remains of animals that went extinct due to our exploitation. And the last thing, which is what I want to focus today, is climate changes due to carbon dioxide, pollutions, and greenhouse gases we release into our environment. Right now, 
we can only slow down the first two problems, but we can change the course of climate changes. We can over this process almost entirely. And the secrets lie within the smallest organisms, bacteria. Now, although bacteria are small, but their biological system that survived billions of years compared to artificial systems that do not have such capacity. And these bacteria, what they hold in billions of years of evolution is the key to the revolution building healthier and better cities. To build better cities, we need you. Our cities need you. That's why we started something very close to home, the tailing ponds around Alberta, which are lakes of waste products from oil extraction. You probably heard of tailing ponds in the news where hundreds of birds fall into them and die every year. And this is a serious issue. But the only way to clean these tailing ponds is to let them sit for a very long period of time and bury them. So over the summer, we worked very hard to create a benign stream of bacteria that not only clean the waste products in tailing ponds, but also convert them into energy and reusable fuel. You can just pump these products the bacteria make into your car or your, or your car to go. <laughs> and it's just drive. I mean, isn't this cool? We literally sped up the process of energy transferring. And you see that thermal, first law of thermodynamics states that energy cannot be created or destroyed, but can transform from one form to another. And for the past century, we, ha we only improved our speed in extracting energy. We have not explored many options to convert energy to one form to another in a fast, faster fashion. And what we can do is take shortcuts using these bacteria instead of using this million year approach. So how did we use these bacteria to clean the environment? Last year, we developed a stream of bacteria that can detect toxic compounds in tailing ponds. And building from the su success, we're using, we're, we went out to search a bunch of genes that allow bacteria to clean compounds that are similar to the toxins in tailing ponds. We optimize these genes by cutting and pasting them together. After verifying they're successfully produced, we insert them back into the bacteria. And to allow these bacteria to go, go into tailing ponds and clean these waste products and convert these waste products into energy, what I've described is the basis of synthetic biology. And you can use synthetic biology to create your own, back, create your own bacteria as well such as making them fluoresce or glow in the dark. And that's actually how synthetic biology became our toy. We're having fun while learning. We're, it seems like we're playing more than studying. Our creativity just gushes out. In 2006, Sir Ken Robinson gave a TED talk titled Schools Kill Creativity. I agree with him because what most students do in today's classroom is to sit down and absorb information. For the most part, we don't really have an immediate use of that knowledge. But his vision is reflected through our team and iGEM. We're representing a new era. We are the prime example of creativity in education. With the innovation, our imagination can create bacteria that remediate lands in Alberta and put them better to use, put them to better use. And we're just like the next generation, Bill Gates. Instead of working for Microsoft, we work for microbiology. <laughs> but the only difference is that we don't have the money. <laughs> well, that is because not like computer scientists. As microbiologists, we get micro paychecks. <laughs> so the entire iGEM competition is an example of how people with basic level of understanding of biology and can employ the smallest living things to take on the toughest challenges of our society. 
to achieve this, we need everyone to participate. And that is how do-it-yourself science is at its best. So how can you get, per get involved in synthetic biology? First of all, safety always comes first because you're still working with living organisms. Then you need an idea, a great idea. The great idea can come from your passion or simply a problem you always want to tackle. With an agree idea, you need the recipe of synthetic biology. And the recipe, you can get them free online. It's open source. Every iGEM team has a set of procedures on their website. They're free for you to use and targeted to specific areas they work in. And with that recipe, you need tools to carry out these ideas. And you can buy them cheaply on eBay or use household items. For instance, instead of using a fancy disinfection machine, we can actually use a pressurized rice cooker to kill the bacteria. Or instead of shocking bacteria, to ask them to take genes in. And you can just insert, gene, insert genes into bacteria with laxatives. I mean, who would have thought of that? <laughs> we humans use laxatives to get rid of things, but bacteria use laxatives to take in things. And last is to have fun. Have fun exploring, solving real world problems. With a little bit of science, passion, and motivation, you can create a better city. All you need is a little bit of courage and the creative spirit to look beyond the convention. So to build better cities, innovation and courage are the foundation. It takes great courage to accept changes, new ideas, but the future cities need this courage to prosper. On top of that, science is a tool. It's accessible. For everyone, you can use it. And lastly, and certainly not the least, is creativity. To build better cities, creativity and build creativity is the concrete and steel. That's because building better cities is about looking beyond what's the ordinary, to realizing the, the insignificant things around us. and to put these things to better use, to use things like the bacteria we think which are harmful to better use. And synthetic biology allowed my team and me to look beyond the usual. This is what Calgary and Alberta are about. This is what our future cities are about. So look beyond the horizon. And you can take on the challenges to work with microorganisms micro to clean our city as well and have fun with science. Mm -hmm. So think outside the box and inside the cell. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.